Hello students, in this video let us see how a CRT monitor works. So what is a CRT? It's nothing but a cathode ray tube. Now what, how actually a cathode ray tube works or what it is actually? Let us see. The cathode ray tube or the CRT is a vacuum tube containing an electron gun. Electron gun is nothing but a source of electrons and a fluorescent screen. This is the fluorescent screen with the internal or external means to accelerate and deflect the electron beam used to create images in the form of light emitted from the fluorescent screen. So you, do you understand that? See, this is the cathode. It, ele it emits electrons. It passes through. This is the electron beam. Okay. And... Uh, these are the anodes. This is the cathode ray tube. So these are the anodes. And this is the focusing coil. These are the deflecting coils. Passes through it and falls on the fluorescent screen. Now what is this fluorescent screen? Fluorescent screen is nothing but a screen of phosphorus. Where when this electron falls on the screen. On one point on the screen. That point gets emission of light or the light in that point is emitted okay and you can see that from the other end see this is the monitor and you can see from this side okay so that light gets highlighted or it it burns up and hence you can see the image okay so this is of one thing and actually the image is formed the whole from here top to bottom and that is why you can see the pictures in the crt monitor so the features of CRT can be four, um, split into four main sections that is electron gun, deflection system, fluorescent screen, glass tube and base. We will see this one by one. So this is the structure of basic cathode ray tube. You can say it as a block diagram. So these are the connector pins where it is connected. This is the base and this is the electron gun. This is the focusing system that is where the electron should actually pass through is a decided by this focusing system and once it passes it can it is also an anode okay anode in the sense this is a opposite this is a cathode this is an opposite to this it will be the charge of opposite to cathode will be present in this okay and it pulls the electron in this direction and these are the horizontal deflection plates that is a uh, whatever the beams they pass if there has to be a horizontal deflection then this plate helps if there has to be a vertical deflection then this plate helps okay and it falls because of this two things this falls on the this phosphor coated screen and the electron beam when it is passed you get see, you get to see the image on this phosphor coated screen let us see the functions one by one so the role of this section that is electron gun is to produce electrons uh, at a high fixed velocity and this is done through a process called uh, thermionic emission okay the technology technical name for this is thermionic emission next is the deflection system so it has two perpendicular sets of electric or magnetic fields uh, this allows control over both horizontal and vertical axis that is a uh, horizontal and vertical plates actually helps in the deflection of the electron beam by controlling the voltage applied to the fields, uh, it is uh, possible to vary the deflection through electrostatic force or motor effect. What is electrostatic force? Uh, it's nothing but the electrical force or the um, force you are applying to the stat, uh, you know, stagnant electro electrons that are passing. Motor effect is nothing but, you know, uh, you are trying to move one thing with the help of other. Okay, so that is a motor effect. Next is the fluorescent screen. The role of this part is to display the electrons okay, that hit the CRT, that is cathode ray tube, whatever it pulls the electron and uh, puts it on the fluorescent screen. So it is coated with the material that is phosphorus actually and which emits light when struck by electrons. Okay, So zinc sulfide or phosphorus are the two mainly common used materials for this. Glass tube and the base. Glass tube is nothing but the whole thing, whatever it is there, 
it is actually a conical evacuated glass tube that is uh, it does not contain any air in it okay highly evacuated maybe small amount of air is present but it's totally you know nothing is present i think the art particles or whatever it's not present inside this tube it's a long clear tube and it uses a glass with the large deep fairly heavy and relative fragile fragile in the sense it breaks easily okay it's a very delicate ones you have to handle it very carefully and inside the tube's neck there is assembly that produces a stream of electrons as we have seen in the diagram and electrical connections are made for this um through the back and usually it's in a circular form the tube is in the circular form the vacuum uh, created inside is about 0.001 pascal to 133 pascal that is the pressure inside okay so how does this work see this is the cathode ray you know passing through this is the reflection coils uh, this is a cathode ray tube but this is anode that is the entire screen is a uh, coated with the phosphorus and uh, so these are the you know um, you can say it as a uh, like it's a board where it has all the con uh, connections of uh, you know reflection control grid control gun control uh, okay all those things are uh, there so crt monitor contains of tiny red green and blue phosphor dots here okay that glow when struck by the electron in a crt monitor tube this cathode is heated okay this grid whatever is that it is heated then the heated filament is in a vacuum created inside a glass tube electrons are negative and the screen gives a positive charge so the screen glows okay so this is a uh, electron guns with the green blue and red electrons it passes through this this is the grid okay so the working is a uh, it works by having the electron beam the scan a screen at a rate faster than our eyes can perceive okay so the images actually we see are the dots it's uh, formed by striking of the electrons so it can be made without previous image dis disappearing okay so that is why it scans each time uh, e uh, twice each time first filling the odd holes then the even holes each scan is about 1 by 50 of a second that is you cannot actually uh, have the image at once it scans two times okay at one uh, in the one stretch it fills the odd holes uh, that is the odd points uh, and in the next scan it holds the even points so how does a color crt works color tubes are three different phosphors like again red green and blue so these are electron guns are uh, three of each three uh three electron guns for each primary color uh, arranged in straight line or triangular form whatever the whatever is comfortable it is done and three beams in color they would not strike the screen at the same point what they do so you can see the you know three three points here right so what they do when they strike here in between if at all there is a point where it has to be glowed they make a mixture of two things and glow and hence we can see the picture so this is now they have put it uh, they have maximized it uh, or uh, they have shown it very clearly how this happens so this is a magnified field of delta gun shadow mask color crt there is also what we call it as a beam penetration this is the shadow mask there is a beam pen penetration so in this what happens is uh, two layers of phosphor are coated on the inner side of the crt okay and the color depends on how far the electron beam penetrates into the phosphor layers a beam of slow electrons exits only the outer red layer while the beam very fast that penetrates to the red layer and excites the inner green layer at intermediate beam speeds combination of red and green light are emitted to show two additional colors yellow and orange 
so one layer is red and one more layer is green if the beams are a little slow it only hits the red layer and red layer gets excited only if it is stronger it hits the red layer red layer red layer gets uh, excited and also it goes to the green layer and green layer also ex gets excited so when this happens there can be an intermediate colors like uh, again yellow and orange okay and um, so it depends on the beam acceleration voltage and beam penetration is an inexpensive way in this manner okay and so that is why it is used but only four colors are possible hence the color quality may not be as good as the color CRT okay so the shadow masking whatever it says this is the better one because it has a three different colors and it uh, points on the three different parts in the screen and intermediate it's like it's overlaps the color okay you can see all the colors whatever it's there in the uh, you know picture or uh, the fo uh, photo or the video whatever it is there so um, the three electron beams are deflected focused as a group onto the shadow mask so it contains a series of holes aligned with the phosphor dot patterns and when the three beam pass through the hole in the shadow mask they activate the dot triangle see this is a, like a triangle see these three things are a triangle these three tri things make a triangle so uh, which appears as a small spot on the screen see this is magnified uh, whatever the diagram we are having it's actually very you know compact or very small okay so uh, triangles are in so that each electron beam can active only beam can activate only its corresponding color dot when it passes through the shadow mask so the color variations you can see can be obtained by varying the intensity levels of the three electrons so it is not like you know um, you are uh, activating one and one more layer and another more layer what is done electron beams itself put in a very low and high um, beams uh, so intensity levels so you can get uh, uh, you know like either it is a uh, white or a gray okay depending on the intensity you are using so yellow is produced with the green and red uh, magenta is produced with the blue and red cyan is produced when the blue and green are activated equally okay so this is how the colors work thank you